Timely. Insightful. Discussion and analysis of economic trends and markets. From Southern California to Sacramento. Featuring business and political leaders. Unique field reports. From Orange County and the campus of Chapman University, this is the Chapman Business Report. I'm going to move on to a subject that was the subject even a year ago, and that was the rising U.S. deficit and debt, uh, which is <laughs> continues to rise. <laughs> yeah. Is the debt now 17 trillion, and Almost, the deficit, yeah. which is one of the reasons we've stopped talking about, is now finally first time in this Obama administration below a trillion. But as he was everything, yeah. you know, we, we were going to get a grand bargain. We didn't get a grand bargain, and and, and this was. This was going to be the beginning of the end. They downgraded U.S. Standard and Poor's, exactly. downgraded U.S. Treasury. Yeah. Where did that conversation go? <laughs> it's not. Is it happy days are here again because we've got a deficit that's below a trillion now? It's uh, the nature of our political process, you know. If there's no crisis, everybody forgets. Uh, what the happened? The sequester was supposed <laughs> to bring the country to a halt. It hasn't. Yeah, yeah it hasn't. But uh, just historical perspective again. Uh, 2008, 2007, we had a deficit of about 160 billion dollars. That was last year of Bush administration. That's a good year. Then we we hit 1.4. 1.2, 1.2, 1.1, and that's when basically everybody became aware of it, that where are we going? We know why deficit went up, partly because tax revenue basically shrunk, that's expected sure. during recession, and then all of those stimulus packages that they were kicking, helping, you know, GM, all, all those stuff all together created that. So basically, increased the spend spending and, too. Uh, oh yeah, every, every category of a spending increased, right. except, except interest payment on debt. <laughs> and, and the reason it did not increase because the Federal Reserve is buying all the debt. Right. So interest rate, can you imagine by the way, if interest rates start going up really rapidly, how much our interest payment on that debt is going to increase? On 17 it's, trillion? It's going gonna, it's gonna to eat up a whole bunch of our federal budget. But anyway, so as you said, S&P downgraded us. Our debt as a per, uh, our deficit as a percent of GDP became almost 10 percent, you know, at peak. That was when everybody sure. went after one Greece. 1.6. Well, we didn't quite hit 1.6, but we have a 16 uh, yeah, billion dollar economy. 10 percent, exactly, almost. Greece was 10 percent. Yeah, Greece was 10 percent when everybody went after them. Right. And so we're down them. to 4 percent, and we're down to 4 percent. This fiscal year, which will end in a few months, we're recording this in June, will be 650, and the forecast is, is about uh, the CBO uh, is for 560. 560 for the next for 2014. Year. But let's not forget why <laughs> we're here now. The reason is not because we really cut government spending. The reason the deficit Capital is gains. shrinking is we increase taxes. We increase taxes. Right. Don't forget that we increase the people who are making over what, 250? Uh, no, 400,000 and, and more at the, at the national level. And also, more importantly, economy is improving. So basically, the government no, is spending. The sequester spending, cut what? Two percent? Uh, oh, also, that's but nothing. It, that's, it is nothing. It is. It is insignificant. Twenty billion. Larger right. scheme of right. things. Uh, you of, know. Dis of the discretionary spending. Exactly. And and unfortunately, this is what economists are insisting. This is the time that we should address this. That as economy well, well, here's improving. the bad news because we're no close. We, we may have been close to this grand bargain, which would have meant significant deficit reduction. And they say now we are no close, and there's no incentive. No. The Democrats entrenched in wanting public works spending. They think that's a, and, and, and there's a lot of economists who think that's a way to create yeah, jobs. Yeah, but not down. And they want more revenues yeah, still. Yeah. Uh, we were talking. We'll take it up in another show. Perhaps this internet tax yeah. allows states to tax where companies are if they're not based in their state for internet sales. The Republicans want more spending cuts beyond the sequester, and they want entitlement reform. Yeah, yeah. It's a huge. I don't see either side moving toward exactly. each other. Exactly, and that's the sad part. You know, honestly, from an economic point of view, we look at every category of spending. That's defense, entitlement, which is Social Security, Medicare. You look at income securities, spending by all government agencies. We have to really address and cut across the board. So having said this, though, as an economist again, I don't think we can absorb lots of cut in short term. Now, I'm not saying doing it tomorrow. But long term, but, I know you list that as one of your biggest concerns. The biggest Top concern. Three. If we do not solve this problem, it's going to come back and hunt us very soon in next cycle that we're going to hit. Because next cycle, again, scenario is going to be the same. Tax revenue is going to shrink, and then government spending is going to increase. And still, we have a huge debt, and we're going to pile up more debt. And remember, in order to de reduce the debt, 
first we have to get rid of the deficit because that is accumulated deficit. So this is a golden opportunity, I believe, for our public servants to come up with a framework and a plan, not to kick in tomorrow, but kick in maybe over the next 10 years to really address this issue and solve it once and for all, because if we don't, eventually this is going to cause a huge trouble for our economy. So if I were a certain, certain second term president whose name rhymes with Obama, <laughs> this might be a, a pretty good legacy, right? That to actually get this grand bargain it and, should. and get it some should. bipartisanship. And it shouldn't, again, it shouldn't be just raising revenue, ignoring, you know, spending well, you got, you or got just it. cutting it's, it's the spending. It's got to be compromised. Uh, they have to compromise yeah. and it has to be maybe the combination of both. However, I would rather, as an economist, we address a spending cut way more than, you know, enhancing revenue, because we already done that. But you could enhance revenue, again, in a different ways, addressing the fundamental change in our tax code, making it even, maybe I hate to use the word because some people don't like it, make it even fair, close up some of the loopholes, and maybe that would enhance, you know, your revenue. But I hate to just pick one piece and ignore the other. But if ever there was a time, the IRS is not in great favor these days. <laughs> for, for another time. Yes, yes sir.